I'm working on it. What version? 100. What version? 100. 100. King James? Okay. Yeah. 
not be ourselves. We are the people and the people of his action. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. May we bow our heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, once more we come before your presence, dear Lord God, yeah. thanking you for another day, Heavenly Father, a day that none of us have seen before, dear Lord God, but it's only through your grace and your mercy, dear yeah. Lord God, that you saw fit to wake us up this morning, dear Lord God. Dear Lord God, we thank you for uh, the activities of our limbs, Heavenly Father, because uh, uh, many did not get up this morning, dear Lord God, and we thank you so much, Lord God, that you saw fit for us to get up, dear Lord God. Dear Lord God, the rain stopped, dear Lord God, early this morning in order for some of us to get here, dear Lord God, and we thank you so much for that, dear Lord God. But, and dear Lord God, we saw the bright sunshine, dear Lord God. The sun, S-U-N in the sky, dear Lord God. But we know that you were already up, dear Lord God. And we thank you so much for that, dear Lord God. Dear Lord God, you are such a merciful God, dear Lord God. We thank you for, for your son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cross for each and every one of us, Heavenly Father. Dear Lord God, we thank you for Jesus' shed blood, dear Lord God. None other nobody else could have done it but him, dear Lord God. And we thank you for that, dear Lord God. Dear Lord God, we thank you that, that when Jesus was hanging there on the cross, he could have come down, dear Lord God. But we are so blessed, so blessed today that he did not come down, that he stayed there for you and for me, dear Lord God. We thank you so much, Lord God, for all that you done for us, dear Lord God, and for all that you're going to do for us in the future, dear Lord God. We don't know what the future holds for us, dear Lord God, but we know that you hold the future, dear Lord God. And we thank you for that, dear Lord God. Dear Lord God, we thank you for everyone that was able to come out today, dear Lord God. We, we uh, uh, thank you, and we uh, thank you for our pastor, our first lady, dear Lord God. We thank you for all the ministers, dear Lord God. We thank you for the men that were here early this morning, cleaning up the water downstairs, dear Lord God. Dear Lord God, we thank you for our sister Beverly and her crew that made breakfast, dear Lord God. Dear Lord God, we have uh, so much, so, so, so much to thank you for, dear Lord God. But most of all, most of all, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, dear Lord God, who did it all for us, dear Lord God, for each and every one of us, Heavenly Father. And I want all of us to, to, to always remember, dear Lord God, that it wasn't us that did it, that it was Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus. These and all blessings I'm asking in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Find the devotion. Just give me this. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. First, I do give honor to God, who is the head of my life. Thank God for grace and mercy, for peace and joy, unspeakable joy. Thanks, Sister Betty, for that prayer this morning. That was powerful. Powerful. Nothing but the grace of God. As I came in this morning, I saw a horrible accident. And uh, one car was turned over upside down, another one was just in pieces on the side of the hill. And I thought to myself, only by the grace of God. Yeah. Nothing but the grace of God. Yeah. So grateful that he let us see another season that we celebrate the resurrection of yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because if it had not been for him, none of us would be here. Yeah. I'm grateful that he hung on the cross. Yes. And he died for you and me. Yeah. Put it all too. He rose on the third day. 
with all power. With all power. And I'm so grateful. For that was the greatest love of all. For he didn't have to do it, but he did. So grateful this morning.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We just want to invite in the Holy Spirit. Just pay to meditate on the things of the Lord. And invite him.
praise him, Lord. For it's all her. He can do it all. And we know that he can do it all because we are here this morning. He has risen. We celebrate the risen part of him. So we're going to be waiting for him. Right now, we're going to have our house with our pastor. Applications are available in the vestibule. See Sister Nash if you have any questions. Notice it says available to all high school county seniors. Not just Linda Vista, all high school county seniors. Amen. Oh boy, that was short. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Do we have any first time visitors here today? Some of y'all might feel like first times because it's been a long time since you've been here, but that's okay. We're glad that each and every one of you are here today. We thank God for you. We thank God that his son rose today. He rose with all power. And that because of that, we are able to be here today. Amen. We are able to praise him with freedom. We don't have the Holy Because he rose, amen. So like I said, once again, it's great to see each and every one of you here today. One of these days, I'm going to figure out why all of y'all like to sit back at the back, you know, instead of coming on down to the front a little bit. But until then, we're just glad that you're here. And go ahead, praise God the way that God deserves to be praised. I looked over there and I saw Journey Day. She was just a rocking back and forth. I think she was clapping her hands too. She was, she was in the middle. So if Journey Bay can do it, that means all of us should be able to do it. I think she was one of the youngest ones in the house. So 
decided to stay on the call. So be and for you. That was his promise. His promise was to come, die in our place, so we wouldn't have to have that suffocation like he did. But he did it for us. Give us an opportunity. Now is the time for altar prayer. Now if you want to come to the altar, you can. But we'd like for you to stand in the presence of the Lord for the altar prayer this time. Praise the Lord. Don't come down to the altar. You can. Get a chance to pray for one another, pray for each other, and let everyone know that everyone knows that we are in prayer every day. We are in prayer all the time. This is a praying church. I can vouch for that for standing in the, in the pulpit at this time. I've been praying for, praying with, and praying with someone. So at this time, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come, Lord, thanking you for giving us another day, another time to celebrate the time that you have suffered for our sake, for suffering keep us on our, keep us on a going way. So Lord, we ask you to touch our pastor and his wife, Lord. We ask that you to strengthen him, strengthen him, give him the wisdom and understanding. We ask that you pray, that we pray for the sick and the quick, wherever they at this time. Lord, we know we go into the hospital see the people on the streets and stuff like that. We pray for them, Heavenly Father, hoping that someday or somehow that they will run, they will seek, seek God to be on their side, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Because he is the one, Heavenly Father, that took our place on the cross, Heavenly Father. And he is now sitting at the right hand of his Father, making intercession for us. Yeah. When old Satan says, I got it, he said, don't worry about it, because he have no power. I got all the power. So we ask that you touch each one of our hearts and our minds and Father. Touch the families, touch our deacons, touch our deaconesses, Heavenly Father, especially the Heavenly Father, touch our families. Bring your families back together. Bring them on one accord and pitch you, pitch you down. Touch our musicians and our singers and singers and choir. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Just be happy and be at peace 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Father God, I ask, Lord, that you would help me, Lord, to do your will and your will alone, Lord. Help me, Lord, to, to move back as you move forward, Lord. Use me, Lord, to present your word, Lord, and your word alone. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this time. I thank you for each and every ear that will hear what thus saith the Lord. Father God, I know your word will not return unto you void, that it will go out and do what you have said it to do. And Father God, I know that each and every heart will be touched. I know that lives will be changed. And all of us will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It is in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Rejoice because he rose. Through his resurrection, Jesus conquered sin and death, offering us the gift of eternal life. As believers, we rejoice in the assurance that death has been defeated. And we have been granted the promise of resurrection unto everlasting life. Now, if you are a believer and you heard what I just said, you should have some joy in your life right now. Amen? If you are a believer and you heard what I just said, you should have some joy in your life. Be reminded that each and every one of us will have an everlasting life. Not because of anything that we have done so great or so good, but because of what Jesus did for each and every one of us. The song was sung that he said, he, they hung him high, they stretched him wide, he hung his head for me, he died. Amen? He died for each and every one of us so that we would have everlasting life. God the Father sent him to earth. So that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So it should be some joy in knowing that alone right there. So for that reason, we should rejoice because he rose. Amen? Amen. John 3.16 in the King James Version said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4 in the NIV says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Yes. That's a reason to rejoice because he rose. Amen. Yes. Our text talks about the stone being rolled away. And so many of us think that the stone had to be rolled away so that Jesus could get out of the grave. But let me tell you right now, Jesus did not need the stone to be rolled away. There was nothing that could hinder him from raising up because as he said, when he rose up, he rose up with all power in, in him. Amen? So that means there was power for him to get out of the grave He's passed that power on to each and every one of us that believe in him. So he's telling us that no matter what is trying to hinder us, we can still raise up. Amen? We don't have to have anything to keep us down because nothing can hold us back because of the power that God has given each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. And we need to know that it's not just power when you come to church. It's power when you wake up and when you open your eyes every morning. You have the power of God dwelling within you if you are a believer in the Son of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So you already have the power. You already have everything that you need to overcome whatever this world is going to throw at us. That's why I said rejoice. Because he rose, amen? Because he rose with all power, amen? Amen. When Christ arose, he was, he was in his resurrection body, the body of the spiritual dimension of being which has no physical bounds. In other words, nothing could hold him back. You know, we look at it and say, well, this could hold him. You know, the, 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 the grave, the stone, whatever could hold him. Nothing could hold him. Nothing could hold him. Because he rose up in his resurrected, spirit-filled, powerful body. Amen? 
the stone was rolled away so that the witnesses could see, so that each and every one of us could see. You know, we do have, we still have this problem where seeing is believing. We have to see it to believe it, you know? And I know there is a lot of us sitting in here that's still going through that thing. We have to see it to believe it, amen? But I'm gonna tell you right now, we don't walk by sight, amen? We're supposed to walk by faith. So if the word of God said that it happened, that's what we're supposed to be believing in, amen? Right. If the word of God said that we can do, yes. that's what we're supposed yes. to be believing in, amen? Yes. We don't supposed to look at what the world is trying to tell us because the world is going to try to keep us down forever and a day, amen? amen. And we have to look at what God has said each and every day. You know, I don't believe that God rose his only begotten son just to be doing something. I believe he rose him for that reason so that each and every one of us could have everlasting life. I believe he rose him so that Jesus could sit on his right hand and intercede for you and me. I believe he rose him up so that each and every day when we're in trouble, we can call upon him and he can bless us with his spirit so that we can continue on throughout the day doing whatever it is that he desires for us to do. Amen? Amen? Amen. I believe he rose because of that. It gives me so much joy to know that even in my weakest times, even in my darkest hours, he still rose for me. He still rose for me. I don't care what you might be going through, what might be bothering you, what might be hurting you. He still rose for each and every one of us. Because he rose, we should be rejoicing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Even though Jesus had said that he would raise up after three days, people still needed to see it to believe it. Like I said, just like us, we still need to see before we believe it. Jesus had told, Jesus has told us that he will heal us, and a lot of us don't believe it until we see it. Amen? Jesus has told us that he will provide for us, and a lot of us don't believe it until we see it, amen? Jesus has told us all these things that he will do to take care of each and every one of us, and so many of us still don't believe it until we see it. But I'm going to tell you right now, you've got to start believing before you see it. You've got to start having that faith that no matter what, somebody tries to tell you or what somebody else is trying to show you that Jesus has already did everything for you to get through anything and everything that you might come up against in your life. Amen? We got to get to a point where the only thing we do is trust and believe in Him no matter what's going on in our life. Trust and believe in Him no matter how bad it might look. Trust and believe in Him no matter how hard it gets. Trust and believe in him, no matter what somebody is telling you. Trust and believe in him when the whole world is turned against you. Trust and believe in him. Trust and believe in him. Because he rose. Trust and believe in him and him alone. Like I said, he didn't do it just, for, just to be doing it. He did it for a reason. For us. He did it because he loves each and every one of us. And I don't believe that there's anybody that loves anybody or anything wants it to have trouble, trials, and tribulation. I don't believe that. Now, you can tell me that it says this or it says that, but I'm not going to believe that because my God is a good God. My God is an awesome God. And he's been with me all along the way, even when I didn't know he was with me. And some of you didn't know that he was with you, but he is with you. No matter what it is that you went through, you might not have understood why it happened, when it happened, but let me tell you, he's still with you. Amen? He's still with you. He rose to be with you. That's why I said rejoice because he rose. Rejoice because he rose. Because he rose, now we can overcome anything and everything. Nothing can hold us back or hinder us. Amen? Amen. As I was studying this, I fell in love with verse 4 uh, in our text for the day, which says, And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. I fell in love with this because I saw this verse that those things and those people that are out to keep you captive, 
cannot stand up against the power of God. Amen. Amen. We know the stone was put there to keep Jesus in. We know that the guards was put there to make sure that nobody came and stole his body and everything. But still, he rose. Amen. Amen. And, you know, it was a shaking that went on, you know. And the shaking that went on and the, and the stone rolled away. It wasn't that the angel pushed it away or they got some type of machine to move it out of the way, you know. It was the shaking. It was the power of God yes. that moved that stone out of the way. Yes. And the reason I fell in love with this is because it was telling me, like I'm trying to tell you right now, no matter what goes on in your life, there's a shaking that's going to go on that's going to move everything that's in your way that's trying to hold you back. And you got to understand, when the shaking comes, don't get a scared, don't get a, uh, afraid. I can't get that word out. But don't be afraid when the shaking comes. Be happy. Rejoice. Know that God is doing something in your life to continue to set you free. Amen. Know that God is already shaking these things away so that they will fall dead. So that they will not have any power over you. So that they cannot stop you. They cannot hinder you. They cannot interfere with what God has for each and every one of you. The power of God will shake things up in this world to set you free. Just to set you free. As I was going through that, I couldn't help but, but remember Paul and Silas. Most of you know the story. They were in prison. Down in the deep, of, the deep parts of the prison. Some people say it was like they was down in the sewage, you know, right? But even though it was, they was down deep, 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 they still had guards. They were still in slails. They were still shackled. But then a shaking came. A shaking came. So that tells me it doesn't matter how, down, how far down you are. When the shaking comes, when the power of God comes upon your life, there's nothing that's going to hold you back. Amen. We know in the story of Paul and Silas, the shackles fell off and the gates opened and everything. And they didn't even try to get out. They stood there and told the, 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 the guard that was worried and was about to kill himself that, hey, we still here. We still here. And because they stayed there, guess what happened? The guards led them out. Let them go out. The shaking that went on in that place, the shaking that went on at the tomb was the power of God. It's the shaking going to go on in your life. Some of us might already be going through that shake right now, and you don't know what you're supposed to do. Well, let it go ahead and shake, baby. That's all. You let it go ahead and shake, because it's going to shake something off, and it's going to set you free and whatever it is that you're in. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I thought about another shake, but Paul, after he had been shipwrecked, and he was there on, on the land there, and they were setting the fire, and he grabbed a piece of wood and put it in the fire, and the snake came off and latched on his hand. Yes. And Paul just shook it off. Yes. He just shook it off. Yes. And that just tells me that when those things latch on to you, just shake them off. Just shake them off because you have the power that God has placed within you. And you've got to understand that you do have the power. You might say, well, hey, I was out partying all night last night. I'm still hungover and whatever else. But I'm going to tell you like this. When you give the power, when God gives you that power, nothing can hold you back. Amen. Nothing can hold you back. When God has placed that power in you, it doesn't matter how bad you might think you've been. Yeah. Yes. You know, I know Paul thought of himself as the chief of sinners at one time. And I'm quite sure there's quite a few of us in here that thinks of ourselves that way too. Or thought of ourselves as that way too. I know I could have broke some records. But I know that God gave me the power to overcome yeah, anything right. and great. everything. That was coming up against me. Yes. And I don't worry about what might happen yes. because I still know that God yes. has his hands right. upon right. me. Yes. I still know that yes. God's son yes. gave his life yes. so that I would not have to worry about what might happen in the future. Yes. I know that God's son 
has his arms of protection around me. I'm not saying that it's nothing going to happen to me, but I'm just saying that God is still going to bring me through it no matter what it is that happens to me. Amen? No matter what it is that I go through, God's going to bring me through it. No matter how bad it is, he's going to bring me through it. No matter how tough it is, he's going to bring me through it. That's why I can rejoice because he rose. Amen? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Part of verse 7 of our text says, And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. In Christianity, a disciple is a dedicated follower of Jesus. So I believe that the angel was saying for the women to go and tell Jesus' dedicated followers that he had risen. That leaves the question, why only the dedicated followers? As I thought about this, as I was going through the study, I said, well, would he want the undedicated ones to go and tell the world? And I said, no, I don't think so, because the undedicated ones, as soon as something goes against their way, they're going to stop. They're going to go back home. Or they're going to give in and tell the world that they came up because, yeah, you're right. They're going to forget everything that God has said and done and just fold. But the dedicated followers of Jesus Christ is going to continue spreading the gospel. Yeah. So I ask you the question, are you dedicated? Are you a dedicated follower of Christ? And if you're not, don't be sad about it right now. Rejoice because he rose because you can become a dedicated follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. We might not have made it the way that we want to make it to, to have made it to, but we still have a way to go, amen? Yes. And we still have Jesus with us, amen? amen? We can still overcome anything and everything. And you're going to hear that coming from me a lot because I've experienced it, amen? I'm not saying this because I read it somewhere. I'm saying it because I have lived it, amen? And I can tell you that because of Jesus Christ in my life, I am an overcomer. And I will continue to overcome. No matter what it is that's trying to hold you down, you can overcome it. Whether it's alcohol addiction, whether it's drug addiction, whether it's pornography, whether it's lying, cheating, stealing, cussing, whatever it is. Gossiping or just evilness that might be in your heart. You can overcome it all because of the power of Christ. Amen? And we have to remember that no matter what, no matter what, during his crucifixion and, crucifixion and burial, his dedicated followers were in hiding. They thought they would be next. You know, that brings to mind how some of us, as I said before, don't want to go out and witness to nobody because we don't know what they're going to say. We don't know how they're going to act. We don't know how they're going to treat us. So we are afraid to say something. I pray for the opportunity to say something to someone. If they're rejected, they're rejected. But I just want to make sure that everybody knows how great my God is. I want to make sure that I can tell somebody about Jesus each and every day. If I'm just still telling my wife, my children, or whoever it is, I want to make sure that I tell somebody about the goodness of God each and every day of my life. I'm not satisfied unless I can say something great about the great God that has saved my life. Amen? And that's the way we should feel. We should be out on the prowl. Just like the enemy is out on the prowl to destroy somebody, we should be out on the prowl to bring somebody into the family of God. Amen? Yes. We should be out there. If you're walking out there with your face all tore up and everything else, nobody's going to want to say anything to you. But if you walk out there with that joy that God has already put in you, that's shining all about, somebody's going to ask you a question. Somebody's going to ask you something. And you'll get a chance to tell them about how great our God is. You get to tell them about how you rejoice because he rose. 
And then you get to tell them about how much he loves you, how much he cares for you, how much he's been there for you. Even though you weren't listening to him, he was still walking around with his arms of protection around you. Even though you was going left, he was still there trying to pull you right. Trying to help you through it all. Even though, I know in, that, in Romans, I believe it's 5, chapter 5, it says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. That doesn't mean anything else except what it says. While we were yet sinners, he still died for each and every one of us. He died for us because he wants us to spend eternity with him and our Father in heaven. He wants that more than anything for us to spend eternity with him. Because he knows that when we're in eternity with him, we're going to be living a good life. Amen. He knows that right now we're living a good life down here, even though you might say, oh, I got bills to pay. I, I ain't feeling the best and everything else. He knows that as long as we believe and trust in him, that we're going to get everything done. It doesn't matter. You might not believe me, but believe him. That's right. Amen? Yeah. Believe him. Yeah. Believe me, believe him that he's going to help you through that situ situation. Yes, yes, yes. Believe him that he's going to work out all the good things in your life. Believe him that as you're going through your struggles, that he's going to make a way for you. Right. Believe him that as you're going through your illness, he's going to heal your body like he said he was. Yes, believe him when you're lacking everything, he's going to be your provider. Yes. Believe that he's going to lift you up when you're feeling down. Believe him when he says he's going to never leave you nor forsake you. Believe him in everything. Believe him. Rejoice because he rose. Excuse me. Yes, Lord. Even though it was an angel that told them to go quickly and tell his disciples that he had risen from the dead, it was a word from God. They being obedient to the word of God, they went out quickly from the tomb. It says with fear. And I'm still trying to understand that one. I believe, I believe it was reverential fear. You know, not, not that fear of like, oh, oh, I'm too scared to do anything. But because God said it. God said it. I'm going to be obedient and do what he has told me to do. What he has called me to do. You know? And if each and every one of us, y'all know my favorite saying, right? Just do what you're supposed to do. If we were to do that, we would see how things would change in our lives. Amen? Amen. We heard Jeremiah said that it was like fire shut up in my bones, you know? And just like that, the women had to run and tell the disciples because it was like a fire that was shut up inside of them. You know, and that fire, I believe, just propelled them to run a little bit faster than what they probably would normally run, you know, right? I, I, I wish I could see it. It would probably look like one of those cartoons where their body is up here, but you see this trail coming from back there because they was running so fast to go and get the word of God out. How fast are you running to get the word of God out? How fast are you moving to get the word of God out? Are you moving at all to get the word of God out? Are you moving to tell somebody about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and how great he's been for each and every one of us? Are you moving at all or are you sitting there waiting for somebody else to do it? Go ahead and move the way that God wants you to move so that you can tell this dying world about our living Savior that no matter what, is going on in your life, he will still be there to help you, to bring you through, to bring you out, to set you on. We all, we say it so many times that he picked me up, he turned me, up, turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. That's the only type of ground he knows is solid ground because he is the solid rock, amen? 
We know that we can stand upon him because he is the foundation that each and every one of us need in our lives. We know that we can build upon him because we know that it's good ground. We know that it's great ground. So we know that as long as we're putting our trust and our belief in him, we know that we're going to rise up with all power the same way as our brother Jesus Christ did. We're going to rise up with all power so that we can defeat anything that comes up against so that the enemy will not even consider coming our way. Amen? Right. It would be just like when the enemy was walking around in heaven and he asked God about Job. Amen. The enemy thought for sure that because of the possessions that Job had, once he lose those, he was going to give up on God. We don't love God because of the possessions that, we yes, give, that right. he's given us. No. We love him because of that son that he's given yes. us. We love him because of everything that he's already done for each and every one of us. We love him for everything that he's going to do in our lives. Even we don't know it right now, but we know that he is a good God and he's going to do great things in our lives each and every day. The only thing we need to do is trust and believe in him. Amen. Amen. You know, I always like to add a song, not sing, a chorus of a song. And this one says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Thank you, Lord. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living. Just because he lives. The title of this message was Rejoice Because He Rose. And that's what we need to understand that no matter what's going on in our lives, because he lives, we can face our tomorrows. Because
become heroes. No matter how things look, no matter what people say they in our life, we should rejoice because we rose. Because we rose, we have an opportunity to spend eternity in heaven with him. If there's anyone here that does not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is an opportunity for you to come forward and be led to him. Be led to him so that he would be in charge of your life, in control of your life. As humans, one of the things that disturbs us so much is giving up on control. We need to give up and allow God to move in our lives to do the great work that he desires to do in each and every one of us. If there's anyone here that does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life, I ask that you would please come forward. Let our deacons pray with you. Let them lead you into the family of Christ. If there's anyone here that would love to join this church, we can call on Christian experience, rededication, or candidate for baptism. Ask that you would please come forward now. If there's anyone here that's just in need of prayer, we ask that you would please come forward. Let one of our deacons, deaconesses, pray with you for whatever it is that you're going through. The doors of the church are always open. And I'm not talking about the physical building. But the doors of the church are always open. And you are always welcome to join him. You may be seated. ceremonies 
on the fourth Sunday in April. Okay? Fourth Sunday in April, we will be doing baptismal ceremony. Amen. 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 So let, now let us uh, prepare for our communion.
things that we have in our hands with proven body of our bread and this wine in our cup represent Jesus Christ shed his, shed his blood for us. Oh, 